Uh, hi guys. Um, welcome to another tutorial, or oh, short tutorial by me, Mitford. Ford. Um, was trying to clear the air about materials, so called, inside of 3ds Max, uh, using V-Ray as a renderer. Now, let's. Uh, Start up a brand new copy of 3ds Max 2013. I'm actually using 3ds Max design, um, but there's really no huge difference between 3ds Max and 3ds Max uh, design 2013, so uh, you don't need to worry about that. Alright, for new users, when you start up a brand new copy of uh, 3ds Max or 3ds Max design, you're gonna see this black interface. Um, uh, kind of uh, daunting at first, but gets easy over time. All right, since this tutorial is about V-Ray materials and 3ds Max materials, um, and um, I'm aiming to clear up the issue. The confusion regarding the materials inside 3ds Max. Alright, as we stated before in uh, on the blog, in writing, uh, it's a three tier system when it comes to materials basically, um, and that's for simple materials. Uh, so it's a three tier system and uh, there are materials inside 3ds Max also called uh, shaders uh, there are textures and there are maps let me put it in the correct order first there are materials or shaders then there are maps uh, then there are textures all right let's uh, go ahead and start up uh, our material uh, editor in 3ds max Let's start. You go up here to your right, uh, right top corner, 3ds Max, and you click on this icon for material editor. Uh, when you start up 3ds Max, you actually will not get this uh, material editor interface. You will actually see the new version, which is this. Let me show you. You hold on on the material editor, scroll down. You're gonna see this uh, new material interface, uh, which is fine for most people, but uh, for all the users of 3ds Max and for uh, sake of uh, simplicity, uh, we cho we chose to stick with the older version of 3ds Max, and uh, you can. Uh, find a post on our blog uh, uh, originally written by Peter Guthrie uh, about switching uh, the material editor uh, which I recommend for new users because this new material editor is uh, more complex even though they say it, uh, it's supposed to make it uh, more simple alright let me close this and I'll show you the old one so hold on on this material editor uh, button go to the first one and boom, you've got the new, the old material editor interface. Alright, so once you've read on the blog and you've found out how to switch uh, over the material editor interface by reading and going through all the instructions, uh, when you open 3ds Max and you switch the material editor right here, you're supposed to see this material editor. Well, you'll actually have this material editor, but uh, there are some other functions associated with this um, that uh, you will not get if you're using uh, the new version without uh, using our tricks, so-called, uh, to switch over the interface from the new to the old. Alright, so I've switched over my material interface to the old look. Um, uh, let me show you some tricks. The new interface uh, actually is called a slate material editor. And um, yeah, slate material editor. 
so let's uh, let me show you what you actually see when you s this describe materials for you all right so materials or uh, shaders are actually the first level inside of uh, creating materials inside 3ds max um, when you start up this material editor interface um, you're gonna get this box basically dialog box um, showing you many controls and parameters and um, some of which you need to know some of which you do not need to know now um, since uh, we're working with V-Ray you're also gonna learn today about uh, V-Ray materials all right let's get started about the whole material uh, theory all right so material or shadings by right, 3ds max is the starting point for creating uh, uh, looks or appearances uh, for your objects inside 3ds max you want to give your objects a specific look um, so you're gonna apply a material to it well how do you go about doing this first these are your sample slots basically and the one that's highlighted by this with this white box around it um, shows you which one you're actually working on now as you can see down here um, basically jumps when I change over as you can see showing you I'm working with a new material or a new sample slot basically and you're gonna see this name here change because they all have to have uh, different names You can't have the same material with uh, two names. This popped up uh, because I don't click twice. Don't worry about that. All right. So when you open this uh, new interface, you're gonna see all of these uh, controls come up. Really, the ones you're most interested in is uh, the basic parameters for now. Um, so when you start up this version you're gonna see up here to the right hand corner uh, a section labeled standard and this to the upper right hand corner here which I have my course on now is actually where all your materials are gonna be existing basically this is where you switch material this is where this is what tells you that you have a material inside 3ds max Alright, so starting up 3ds Max and starting the material editor, you're gonna end up with a 3ds Max standard material. And uh, basically, this is the, the first material you're gonna work with in 3ds Max, and um, it's the easiest to work with, by the way. Um, so, it's the most basic level of materials, uh, most basic material in 3ds Max. I won't get into all of these parameters now, but I'm gonna show you. Um, try to describe uh, the differences between uh, materials, maps, and uh, textures. So, this is a material. Material is always gonna be here on this uh, top right hand corner. Inside the material goes a map. That's the next level. So a map is always inside the material and what uh, shows you where your maps are located are these uh, boxes here, these uh, basically uh, square blank boxes. You're going to see them here, 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 uh, here and uh, this is where you put maps and the maps have to work inside uh, standard material or it has to work inside of a material I should say alright so if you want to change a material you click on this and then you're gonna see all of uh, 3ds Max's material come up um, you have quite a few of them and uh, if you click on uh, any one of them, it's, uh, these are all materials. 
all materials. And these basically they are, these are uh, 3ds Max materials. This one here for V-Ray is a new V-Ray material. I'm gonna show you why this came up. Came up because uh, we have V-Ray plugin installed, which is a render. And uh, basically, when I went into the material editor and tried to change my material, I only saw this one material. Basically, there should be a list of materials here. Um, for V-Ray materials and I'm gonna show you how those will show up and don't worry about these for now you can learn these later some other way but uh, these are not important for our new users just this list here of materials alright so I'm gonna show you how you make V-Ray materials up here in this section underneath here basically they are always underneath 3ds Max uh, materials um, with the exception of uh, a few Alright, so you go ahead, close this up. So, you go here to a little teapot with a little square icon underneath it called Render Setup. You click this, and uh, this is what you're gonna see when you click it basically for the first time in uh, 3ds Max. Um, you have uh, Render, Advanced Lighting, Ray Trace, Render Elements, and what you're only interested in common uh, if you're using V-Ray. Um, I'm gonna show you why. Alright, so you go in common parameters and you scroll down. You see you, this little hand comes up and it's allowing me to grab and go down, which can be kind of annoying sometimes. Um, so let me show you an easy way to even do this. You right click and you close rollout, which you now see all of these. Uh, rollouts uh, that exist under this uh, common tab the one we're looking for is assign render so you see this this is 3ds max is default render assign and uh, for using v-ray we don't need this we want to actually set it to v-ray so if you install v-ray hopefully it is the latest uh, version of v-ray you can come here by clicking this choose render uh, button Selecting V-Ray Advanced. The RT is a real-time render of V-Ray. You don't need to worry about that now as a new user. So click V-Ray Advanced. And you're going to see the common tab is still here. But now all these uh, four other tabs came up. And these are V-Ray specific tabs. As you can see. Um, this is V-Ray. No need to worry about that just yet. And, um, this is only for rendering. When there is a rendering time, you're gonna, I'm going to tell you about these. Um, but that's for a later time. Let's close this because you already selected V-Ray. So now we go back to Maps. And uh, <laughs> I said Maps, I meant uh, the Material Editor. Um, this, we use the word so loosely sometimes in 3ds max uh, it's hard to tell mm. what we're actually saying all right so let's uh, open by the material editor and we want to show you where the v-ray material is done. Oh. now you get a list of uh, materials underneath here for v-ray and you know they are v-ray material because they are labeled v-ray and the material MTL at the end, so uh, it's a material with the exception of a few fast SS, fast SS2, uh, which are more advanced materials, but um, in a sense, um, uh, but no need to worry about what they are for now. Alright, so we have uh, 3ds Max materials which ship with 3ds Max and V ray materials with, uh, which come alive when you install V ray. Alright, there's one confusing thing also about uh, V-Ray material. All of these are V-Ray materials, but only one is labeled the V-Ray material. And um, the term is used loosely. Um, when somebody wants to say they're going to use a V-Ray material, they might want to use a V-Ray here material, a fast SS2 material. Um, 
Yes, so the term is used loosely in a CG. You will hear somebody say it was a V-ray material that they use. They might not be talking about the V-ray MT, a V-ray material here. They might be talking about another V-ray material. So it's loosely used. But um, for this purpose, a basic V-ray material, just as a basic uh, um, 3DS Max material is called standard material. This is a V-ray's basic material or its standard material. And uh, it's the simplest material to use and um, the one you will use uh, for almost every project if you're using V-ray. So let's click on it. And you can see up here, now you have another material, V-ray material. Um, this is a V-ray MTL material, basic material for V-ray. Easiest. Uh, but not the easiest, well, it is the easiest, but um, the most uh, used uh, material in V-Ray. Um, uh, you're going to see all these rollouts again. And like I said before, uh, let's talk about maps. Maps are used inside material, uh, no matter what material you select. No matter what material you choose, change the material again, change the material again, change the material again. No matter what material you use, all these grayed out boxes here, or these um, squared boxes which have nothing marked in them, are where your maps go. Maps are used inside 3ds Max. Uh, inside V-Ray and 3ds Max materials so they go inside the material um, when you click on the uh, maps button you bring up a list of all maps specific uh, some specific to 3ds Max uh, which again they fall to the top of the whole dialog box and uh, you have V-Ray specific maps which fall down at the bottom and they have, some of them have a brighter color to tell you this V-ray material so this one I think with just the exception of that one um, you're gonna see some other maps in here which you might not see because I have some plugins installed which are helping me to carry out uh, other functions or giving me extra materials you can install plugins and they give you some extra material such as this Phoenix um, FD particle texture. Uh, it's just a trial of Phoenix for V-Ray makes that uh, software that plugin again so it gave me some extra materials. Alright, so basically you see, let me pick a map. V-Ray map since we're using a V-Ray MTL material. You can see V-Ray map when you load a V-Ray map, um, it brings up its own dialog box. Um, yeah, it brings up its own dialog box. Um, but uh, what uh, it's important to remember is that these uh, materials and maps are set up in a hierarchy fashion. So. If you want to go back to uh, your material, you need to go up. If you want to go to your maps, you need to go down. Um, so this button here allows us to go back to the material essentially because uh, the ma maps live inside the material. So this allows you to go back to where you are, you started from. And I'm gonna click it. Go. Now we're back to our V-Ray material. And the map we just loaded, uh, we loaded it right here. You see it changes from a blank to a, a capital M or a big M, uh, which tells you that some map uh, is living inside one of these slots. And what these maps um, do is they give you added functionality. They give the material uh, special looks or um, they give you the material uh, added uh, functionality like I said before so the materials can do 
um, uh, more effects or more special things um, in terms of uh, giving appearance to some objects you will have inside 3ds Max. Um, so you have your material, you have your map living inside one of these slots inside your material and uh, now let's talk about textures texture is uh, basically a picture or image um, you create it in photoshop you download it online and, you know just any image an image of you and your girlfriend your mom those are can be called textures depending on um, how you view them but they are all textures they are images and so they are textures when you hear them talk about, uh, you know, people talking about textures inside uh, VR and 3ds Max, it's basically some image. <coughs> can be any format. There are many formats: um, JPEG, PNG, TIFF, uh, GIF. Um, all of those are image formats, and uh, they can be used as uh, uh, textures. So how do you use those textures inside 3ds Max? Well, since we have our material as the part, so to speak, for our, um, the map, because the map is actually inside a material, the texture now works inside the map. So we need to go to our map by going back to the map and uh, we need to put a texture somewhat uh, inside one of these uh, areas you see always see it labeled as none or it's always some long box um, grayed out with none written on it and a little check box to the side a little description here so it tells you that a uh, texture can be used inside here if I click it um, what you're actually going to see is uh, I'm going back to all my maps. Look carefully. These are all my maps. Just maps, not materials. More maps. This came up because uh, there is no, you can't access your texture directly from here. Uh, that's just how 3ds Max works. Uh, in, in, in order to access a texture, or to put a texture inside a map you need to select this option here this map basically so on a, this map um, allows a texture to live inside a map so a map allows uh, this map is inside a map and uh, this map allows uh, you to load a texture. Let me go ahead and do that. So, um, anywhere on my hard drive, just anything a wood texture, grass texture, some weird texture. Um, basically, anything. Let me select this wood texture here. Uh, it's called, let me select this one here. It's called 5112.jpg. This is a JPEG. Alright, so I selected it. It brings up its own dialog box. And this is a map. So, like you saw before, a map uh, came up here with its own dialog box. And basically, we went down levels. Um, like I said before, there's a texture, there's a map, there's a material. But the material comes first, then the map is inside the material, then the uh, texture is inside the map. But uh, like I said, the only way to get a texture to show up inside 3ds Max is to put a map inside a map. And the only one map is able to do this and this is a bitmap. So this bitmap goes inside of any other map and it allows uh, you to use a texture. And that's how you use a bitmap. That's, that's the whole function of a bitmap, to load a texture or to bring in a texture inside 3ds Max. So, the texture, if you scroll down, let me close all of these by clicking close, right clicking, clicking close all of them. Right clicking and clicking close all, I should have said. So when they are all open, if 
you want to skip the confusion you right click and close all so now you're able to see all these tabs and the name of them underneath each tab is a whole bunch of parameters very scary at first and a lot of them I really don't use some are for animation some are for controlling the texture adding noise removing noise um, as a new user you don't need to use that and um, some seasoned users don't even use these uh, options so what you want to do is go to the bitmap parameters so bitmap parameters when you go there you can view the image and you see the image that you chose you can zoom in zoom out well, this is the image we chose JPEG you close that and it will spit view image came up closer and you see a name here the bitmap you loaded you see the name come here and uh, this tells me where in my computer this is and um, basically that's how you load the texture so how the texture works inside the map and uh, let's go back up to the map so we're back inside the map we selected the V-Ray map so Let's go back to our material and here we are. Here we are, the starting point. So to clear up the confusion, a material is another name for a shade. A shade is another name for a material. You change a material by clicking here. Picking any material, these are V-ray specific materials, and this is a V-ray. This is a V-ray material. These are V-ray specific materials. Um, maybe they should have called this material V-Ray basic material so to skip the confusion um, so these are our materials and you only and you reach a map by clicking one of these uh, blank slots here click a map go to a map and uh, in order to know the Texture inside the map, you click on one of these blank slots here with none mark and with a little tick box. Um, click on it, uh, and you see the map that the texture that you actually loaded inside this bitmap. And like I said before, you can only load a texture if you put a bitmap inside a bitmap, and the only bitmap you can put inside a bitmap that allows for the showing or the revealing of a texture is. Uh, Bitmap. Bitmap map. <laughs> Alright, so I hope you got that um, all materials issue and maps and uh, textures sorted out. It's a bit confusing for some new users. What are textures? What are maps? Uh, shaders? Uh, maybe some specific thing. Well, it's actually not. It's very simple. And, uh, in this whole uh, 3ds max thing can be really sorted out uh, really easily if you when you start to spend more time uh, one last thing i'm going to show you inside the material you have a basic parameters and from there i showed you how you can load your maps all right if i close the basic parameters you're going to see uh, under all these parameters there's another option here for maps now what uh, what the maps here does is actually it uh, collects it's a list of all the maps you have loaded inside your material um, as you can see we had a map loaded in the diffuse slot uh, diffuse let me go back there close it with the basic parameter you see the M in the diffuse slot and you'll see if you go to maps you're also gonna see it loaded here and the 3ds max uh, made this to you know separate the confusion because if you had basic parameters and all these maps 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 more maps going down it's gonna be confusing so they made a different dialog box which you can drag up it you're gonna see these maps some of these you're gonna recognize that um, 
roughness reflection, highlight glass in this reflection glasses for an IOR. Uh, you're gonna see them all in the basic uh, parameters here. You're gonna see these grayed out boxes or these blank boxes in this here. Um, but uh, when you come here, you're wondering how come there are more, so much more. So these are just added. Um, you can give a material extra functions again by adding um, some map inside here and uh, controlling uh, your materials and how it looks again. Um, let me go ahead and demonstrate one for you real quickly. This is not a modeling tutorial, so I won't go into modeling. I just maximize my viewport by coming here. I'm going to create a sphere. I just came up here to this sunlight looking icon, which is a create by a whole list of options here. But I want the sunlight one, which is a create. Um, this is a modified panel and this is a create tab. So under the create tab you have uh, many other things you can create which are listed here horizontally. We're going to go in geometry section. We have lights, camera, helpers, some of these um, you won't even touch <laughs> for a while. But for now, uh, let's go to geometry. We're going to create a sphere. I just click on draw. All right. Sphere, sphere, sphere. Alright, let me bring up the maps and bring it up. Alright, let me. This material we already created with zero and default. It was the material we created um, at the beginning of this tutorial. So let me just drag it over. And as you can see, it just changed from pink to a gray. Basically it was pink because 3ds Max gives an object you create by default a color here. Name and color. It gives it some color. Um, and those colors uh, really mean nothing much in the material creation process. So I'm gonna drag my material I created. I just clicked on it and dragged it over. I could also click the object and assign material to it um, ok uh, so you want to know oh, no, this is uh, black and this is grey well the reason why this is black is uh, because uh, let me just apply material standard map in the viewport here you gonna see this is also black. Um, Wonder you know why this is black, and it is uh, simply because we have a, a certain map loaded inside a diffuse slot. The diffuse slot is uh, basically what controls uh, the basic color of the image. Basic color the first level of color inside the image. Let me go ahead and uh, clear it by holding one of these blank slots and dragging it over onto the big M and it clears it up. So I have uh, gray material here. It's a preview and it's gray here. You can double click it to see it bigger. Gray. And that. Uh, so let me create now uh, that same wood material you saw me using. So I'm gonna uh, in the material I'm gonna, uh, look for uh, I'm gonna load a map inside here. So inside the map section I'm gonna load a bit map. And this is the wood texture. This is a bit map rollout I don't need to touch it right now. Go no back up. And my texture is applied. The reason why you can see this texture on the object is because I press this button here, this little button says show standard map in the viewport. Uh, you're gonna see show standard map in viewport, but 
has nothing to do with uh, various standard material or uh, 3ds max is standard material it's just a name they gave to uh, this one they show material in viewport and what it uh, is basically to show the maps you have loaded in the viewport Alright, so any map you have loaded in any one of these facts, this shows it. Turn it off, turn it on. And uh, we have our map onto our object here. So, uh, I hope that cleared up the issue. And I um, uh, hope you guys uh, bookmark uh, midford, uh, that blogspot. Uh, midfordviz.blogspot.com you visit us for more tutorials and if you need any have any issues regarding materials just email me and I'll get to you within a matter of hours, minutes I doubt it will take a day um, to answer your questions alright so that was it I'm promising a midfordviz See you next time.